It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James. We're joined today by Travis Harris. Travis is with the New Mexico Farm Bureau, producer from New Mexico. When we say New Mexico, where in New Mexico? Central New Mexico, 85 miles south of Albuquerque. And when we're talking about your operation, uh, what are we talking about? We, we, have we got some livestock in there, some row crop? We raise alfalfa hay. We have some wheat that we harvest for hay. We have some permanent pasture grass that we have that we harvest also for hay when the cows, when the grass gets above a head of the cows. And we also have a few head of mama cows that we have on the farm. Now, we talk about irrigation a lot. And, uh, you know, some producers are, are dealing with, uh, you know, pumps and uh, coming out of like the Ogallala aquifer, if you will. We talk about irrigation on your operation. What are we talking about? We flood irrigate out of the Rio Grande River. There's diversion points of a, north of us, and they divert the water from the river into the irrigation systems. And then the ISOs, our ditch riders, we work out a time schedule with them as to when we can irrigate, and so they can spread the water around to all the irrigators up and down the valley. So, Travis, when uh, we were talking about this, this drought over the last few years, uh, can drought have an effect on your ability to, to irrigate? Yeah. Drought has an enormous effect on our ability to irrigate. If uh, there's not water in the river due to lack of snowfall in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, or if the monsoon rains don't come at a timely manner when the tributaries to the river don't get fed and there's no water in the river. We do have to go back on our supplemental well, wells. We have a supplemental irrigation well that uh, we use in times of uh, no water in the river or no water in the ditches. And so we can supplement our irrigation season with our su supplemental wells. You mentioned hay in there. Uh, let's talk about hay for a moment. Uh, last year, how many cuttings did you get? Was would you would you rated a, a decent year? Last year was a pretty good year. We made five cuttings. We start cutting the first part of May, and we ended up the last of October with our fifth cutting. And we, I was fortunate enough that uh, the monsoons did not come like they normally do at times and so we didn't have any damaged hay I was able to put up all number one quality horse hay that uh, that we sell to local horse farmers and a lot of cattle guys buy the wheat hay to to um, <laughs> to wean their calves on and 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 also supplement hay when when there's no rainfall to provide grass as well so New Mexico's had a, had a thriving di uh, dairy industry uh, in the past. Was talking with a, a hay producer though down around the Roswell area, and he, he just said, "You know, it, it's not not a problem raising hay. We're now at a point where we don't have enough buyers for hay. Uh, ha have you seen some some challenges develop there? I've seen a lot here just recently. There's been a lot of dairies." shutting down in our area and all across the state and so that cuts out some of the places where we send our hay i haven't personally dealt with the dairies for a while but um, there's a lot of my neighbors that do and without the dairies being going in the area there's no place to send their hay and so it is it has become a little challenging moving some hay now we mentioned hay so new mexico uh, let's put those words together new mexico hay association, association. you've got uh, a meeting coming up yes, tell us about do. the hay association the new mexico hay association is a group of of uh producers throughout the state there's like six or seven different regions and um we come together, we put on a conference for the hay and forage producers of the state of New Mexico in Rio Doso, which 
there's a lot of people that like to go to the mountains in Rio Doso to get away from the heat or the to go skiing or whatever. But we put on a, a program that provides CEUs for people that have pesticide application applicator licenses and um, there's like five CEUs and we do it in conjunction with three different states Arizona Texas and New Mexico can can pick up CEUs at our conference we talk about anything from from the irrigation to pest control to weeds to all different specialists on those different uh, topics come and give us ideas it's a two and a half day conference which is uh, I've been attending the New Mexico Hay Association conference for 30 years probably and it's one of the better ag producing conferences that I've been involved in it's not the only conference you've been attending though uh, <laughs> we're we're in Salt Lake City for right, right. Uh, the American Farm Bureau Federation's annual convention uh, and you're involved in, in Farm Bureau. Uh, is it second vice president for I, New Mexico? I serve as second vice president on the state board for New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau. Tell us, tell us about uh, why you're you're involved in Farm Bureau. I mean, you could choose not to be involved in anything at all, but you are involved. Why? Farm Bureau has been a part of my family's tradition for ever. I, I can remember going to Farm Bureau meetings as a kid. I've raised my kids through the Farm Bureau program, but the reason, the major reasons is it brings us as a, as a, a group of producers together and we talk about issues that uh, are pertaining to our agricultural industries. We, um, the, the major emphasis this year seems like is on promotion and, and leadership and I think it teaches responsibility much like the FFA and 4-H programs do and the we also have a lot of uh, time that we spend at the legislature trying to promote um, beneficial legislation for our industry working with our legislators and stuff and we go to Washington DC to try to work on the farm bill and any issues that pertain to agriculture and, and Farm Bureau plays a major role and I think we're the largest uh, voice of agriculture that there is of any any group. Glad you mentioned Washington DC. You and I had the opportunity to, to actually meet in uh, DC uh, last year while you were there for an event. Um, how important do you think it was for those members and staff level members of uh, the congressional delegation to actually not hear just from Farm Bureau, but from a farmer in Farm Bureau? That's the thing, Tony. We have to get out and tell our story. That makes more of a difference to the legislators, to the anybody that's involved in setting policy is hearing what is actually happening to us as individuals, as actual farm producers. And um, all of us, all groups have lobbyists and stuff like that and paid staff that goes to these things. But in my opinion, the one-on-one -on -one conversations that you may have with your legislature or the staff, most of the time in Washington, you don't get a chance to meet your, your actual representative. It's usually staff, but they do such a fantastic job of writing your your information down and what you're concerned on and how you feel and what you oppose and what you are in favor of. It just means so much to those guys. And well, I know there's a, a lot going on for you. Uh, I know you're, you're already making plans for, for 2024. Are you optimistic about 24? If, uh, if we get good snowfall up north and in southern Colorado and northern New Mexico, and water legislation is one of the top priorities in any area of agriculture because there's so much information out there that's saying that we are the least, well, how do you say, um, 
efficient. Maybe. Efficient, the least efficient users of the water, and there's so much demand from the general public, from individuals that are moving into the areas where where everything's booming, everything's growing. All towns are getting bigger. All areas are are getting more people, and there there's a lot more pressure on on the water. But I'm a, I'm worried that. Um, if we don't maintain agriculture and we don't keep producing food and fiber for the for the nation we could be in trouble and so we need to keep our farmers and ranchers going travis it's great to to see you glad you and your family could be here for uh the annual convention of farm bureau Will you come back and see us sometime? I will, Tony. Thank you very much for doing what you do. Appreciate you getting the information out to the public. Travis Harris makes his home and farms in New Mexico and is in Salt Lake City for the American Farm Bureau Federation's annual convention. This is the Agribusiness Report.